Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of the CXO Show. My name is Swapnil Kamath. I'm the CEO of Upgrad for Business. And as usual, favorite time of my week is when I'm interacting with one of my prestigious guests on this particular show. So I'm very, very happy as is self-evident from my particular face. Today, my guest is Akshay Kashyap. How are you, Akshay? I'm doing great. Thank you, Swapnil. Good. And, and you know, that's a welcome to the show. Yes, yes, my pleasure, my pleasure. Uh, I know we're interacting for the first time, but ever since our conversation started, literally five minutes back, we don't do much of preparation before the show because we want to keep it real and normal. But I've seen that you had a a huge smile on your face, and you would make a, a just. You know, that's the way you interact, which is so positive and so nice. And you'd make a very, very good candidate for uh, uh, a toothpaste ad because you've got such a lovely smile and in turn, uh, great teeth as well, unlike me. So you'd, uh, you'd make a great candidate for, uh, for, for for an ad. But thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Um, uh, uh, have you got a lot of compliments about that? See, it's been ten years in Bombay, and I'm still hunting out for those 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 talent hunt guys to to pick me up and get me to something <laughs> like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll share a story about that offline with you. But anyway, the CXO show is a show that features some of India's most successful professionals. The reason why we do this particular show is we believe that there are lots of platforms that feature successful entrepreneurs, sports people bureaucrats sometimes and even philosophers but there isn't a platform that features some of india's most successful professionals and typically the these are the professionals that are running the indian economy in some way and are playing a huge role to us becoming one of the world's largest economies and i thought they should have a platform to share their thoughts and we love our HR and l and folks because they also happen to be my customers. So I love talking to them, but on a more serious note, like I mentioned on every show, the reason why we feature them is because I think people from learning and development, people from corporate HR uh, and HR heads have a very, very good view on people's careers um, because they see them so closely and therefore can come here and really add value to any person or any professional that logs on to the show, right? And that's what we're what we're trying to do. Um, Akshay, before I get started, I want to share something with you, right? Yesterday, I was in, in a CII conference. And, you know, when I say this, um, you know, um, I honestly believe that, you know, corporate L&D has played such a huge role uh, in the development uh, of India, right? Because uh, so much of a person's skilling education happens on the job and through a lot of the learning and development initiatives um, that uh, are, are done by, you know, corporate HR and L&D folks. And of course, the, you know, shining light of some of these initiatives were our IT majors, right? Like Infosys actually built a whole university type system. So did then TCS, Wipro, a lot of these IT majors. But I think a lot of the other companies, if you if you think of HUL for that matter, right? They have such a robust induction program that's almost like a college education. So I think people like you have played a huge role uh, in a way towards the development um, of your companies and in turn uh, contributed in a big way um, to the overall development of the country. And I know it's hard to listen to this sometimes, but this is just the macro <laughs> view on it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's glad to know that somebody acknowledges the uh, existence of... HR and L and D in the I mean from the larger organization strategic perspective. So it's it's yeah. it's limited because it's somewhere or the other you know HR and L and D if I have to say are more mocked off as a as a as an essential tick mark activity in the organization by an outsider unless we really felt through. So those who have experienced would actually acknowledge what is the impact of these these functions that these organizations carry with them. I would agree with you. So before that, I got a little distracted, but I'd love to first give you a little bit of a formal introduction so anybody watching really knows about you. So Akshay Kashyap is the Chief People Officer at Future Generali India Insurance. He is a seasoned professional with over 17 years of experience in insurance and manufacturing, 
armed with an MBA in HR from the prestigious Indian Institute of Planning and Management, Akshay has garnered multiple licenses and certifications, underscoring his own dedication to continuous learning and development. Throughout his dynamic career, Akshay has left a mark on esteemed organizations such as Reliance Life Insurance, Kor Koramandala International Limited, and his current role at Future Generali India Insurance. His commitment to excellence has earned him accolades, including the Young HR Leader Award in November 2022, a testament to his outstanding contribution um, while being associated with the Future Generali Group. Colleagues speak highly of Akshay's unparalleled partnership and contribution to business, describe him, him as a consummate professional who consistently delivers exceptional results with a keen focus on people and culture dimension in every change action. Akshay has showcased a commitment, a passion, a work ethic that is commendable. His approachability has made him very popular amongst employees, reinforcing his reputation as an exceptional HR professional. Having interacted with you very, very briefly, I can believe most of those things. Glad to know so much about self. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, we're more often than not, not used to hearing it. But actually, let me start with my first question. And my first question is often the same to all my guests. Run us a little bit through your journey from possibly your last bit of formal education uh, to where you are right now, uh, so that the guests really know your journey towards this position of a Chief People's Officer at Future and Raleigh. See, um, you want to start with that quality. Okay, let me, let me go a little bit more from the interviewee perspective, right? So let's go from the next time. Um, I am, okay. But, but the reason why I'm actually trying to speak, uh, you know, speak of my 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 upbringing and my up, uh, and and my background rather than starting on my qualification is because that's probably made me more versatile. You have to say it's made me more, uh, you know, adaptive to the environment around me. Because I mean, just to start off with, so basically, I am from, I'm basically from Jamshedpur. Born and uh, born in Bukaro, brought up in Vishakhapatnam, did my engineering, uh, then my schooling in Bhilai, mm. engineering in Kolhapur, MBA in Delhi, first job in Jaipur, second second in Gurgaon, third in third in Indore, then Kakinada in, in Andhra, then Hyderabad, then wow. Mumbai. Wow. <laughs> it's it's in a wow. you know, all throughout the country. Uh, almost yeah, all you're a country. you're a true you're a true Indian. That's the best way to yeah, put it. You're that's, a true that's Indian. That's the best compliment that I get every yes, time that I get. Yes. So. <laughs> So, so that so that's been a brief about uh, you know how did I how, how the journey been for me uh, through throughout my life mm -hmm. from the career perspective I am a chemical engineer and then an MBA in HR again a very standard question an engineer getting into HR how did this happen mm -hmm. uh, going back to the state that as an engineer I was a little aggressive not 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 very comfortable into accepting what is just being said you know engineers tend to be so right. Mm. Now, during one of my internships, I, I similarly got into challenging what the management said mm. of this is how it happens. I said, I'm sorry, I don't agree to what you say. Mm. Now, th now, this thing was related to, to the employees around the organization. And then I said, I would like to talk to somebody who's representing the employees. Mm. I would not like to name the name the organization for mm. sure. Mm. But yeah, then, then I was informed that there is something called uh, the union which represents them. Mm. I said, great. Can I can I talk to the union? He said, No, you cannot. Then I said, Who represents the the employees? He said something called human resources. I said, Okay, mm. great. Now, what is the role of HR? And mm. I was told that the role of HR is to is to represent the employees and ensure that they that their uh, well being is taken care of. Then I asked him, What's the role of a union? Mm. They said that that the role of a union is to take care of the well being of the employees and, and ensure that everything is taken care of. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Mm. They said that uh, the HR represents the management. Mm. There was, I mean, there was some argument around it, and finally, I said, yeah. "Okay, let me let me let me do HR up there." Mm. Of course, once I got into the journey of HR, I realized that it's much beyond what industrial relations was, much beyond what it is. I, I realized that it's a formal learning journey, yeah. and since then, it's been a phenomenal journey for me because it was not only learning. I, I think the, the 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 good thing that that happened uh, in in my formative years of learning was I was push to implement the learnings. Mm. The most important thing for me was to, to, I mean, it's 18 years gone, but you still ask me the basics of 
let's say the motivation theories, I would have a tip of my mind. I, I interview people, I interview kids today, and they and, and you ask them what is Hosberg's theory, they would say, sir, I don't remember. Why? Because it's been 18 months. I said, boss, it's been 18 years for me. <laughs> Ah, uh, got it, got it. So it's so interesting, uh, you know, that you spoke about your your versatile background, right? I think um, locating and relocating yourself in so many places is a blessing in disguise because it, it definitely, I'm sure, didn't feel good, especially when, when you're younger in the moment, it doesn't feel that good. But you realize, I think, in retrospect, how that prepares you for change, it prepares you to interact uh, and get along with different kind of people. Um, it, I think, uh, equips you to feel more confident overall that if you're put in any situation, you would be able to come out of it in flying colors, right? Because I think nothing is, in a way, more unsettling often than relocating so often. So true, so true. See, as, as a child, like I said, right, I was, I, I, I mean, my, my first relocation was when I was just three years old. I mm. definitely know this. Mm. My second relo relocation was was extremely emotional. After my 10th yeah. standard, you're asked yeah. to move ahead. Yeah. It was extremely emotional. I was I was cursing my parents. I was cursing my brother for, yeah. because, especially my elder brother, because he had completed his 10th, his 12th, his, his, yeah. yeah. his yeah. graduation, yeah. everything well. And then he, yeah. and, and then he never had this problem. Yeah, I was supposed to resettle. I was like, well, I don't want to get out of here. Yeah, I can, I can but, imagine. Yeah, yeah. Once yeah. you were out, I think my 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 parents played a very strong role in it. My my relatives out in the new city, they played a very strong role in it. They helped me understand that how was this change important. Yeah, like coming up to meet new people, yeah. new new communities. Yeah, trust me, I moved from south to north. Huh? So yeah, imagine the. I mean, I'm I'm a North Indian, but but brought yeah. up in south. I didn't yeah. even know the uh, Chalta language of Hindi. Yeah, 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 I, I, yeah, yeah. I knew pure bookish language. Yeah. So, huge change. Huge. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's very interesting. I've often seen that in people. You know, b besides the thing that I spoke about, I think, uh, you know, the one thing, especially when you spoke about the cultural differences, um, you know, what you realize, even if your relocations are within India or your relocations are outside of India, I think people come back realizing that at the heart of it, it uh, people are very similar. Uh, yeah. And I think the other thing that they start appreciating is the differences as well, right? Well, in a lot of cases, people are very, very similar. But in a lot of cases, they're very different from each other. Then you need to keep both ideas in mind while uh, operating, which is people are similar in many ways and dissimilar in, in so many different ways. But I think you get a real understanding of that when you had the disguised uh, blessing of, of relocation in so many yeah, cases, so right? I, I think the other thing is on your background, on this show, because we've had a lot of people from the HR background, uh, I think this combination of engineering and HR seems to be quite a deadly one, right? Uh, because I have now interacted, Akshay, with so many HR heads and I'm seeing increasingly this combination, right? And I think that especially in the in today's day and age, uh, HR head needs to bring so many aspects of data, analysis, backward engineering. You get what I'm trying to say, right? So many aspects of that into the modern HR role that often people from that engineering background, um, I've seen often are, are, are getting to these positions and being able to deal with them um, with, with great uh, you know, effect. Uh, right, so I I don't know whether you have any comments on that. So to see, I I I, I mean I I definitely recall my earlier days, right? So somewhere around must be in 15, 16 years back, and I was again in, interacting with somebody from the industry. So actually, somebody from beyond it, because in those days I was with the manufacturing, and, and uh, was interacting with one of my colleagues, one of my seniors actually, who was mm -hmm. who was from the service industry. Yeah, and the and the this the, the state of mind then was that. HR is an art, mm. right? So the, the art of dealing with people, the art of interaction, the art of you know dealing yeah. with situations. How do you how do you manage it? While a person like me, right, always believed that there's there's nothing called art. Even art is science. Yeah. But there is there is a there there is. I mean, if I mean, in if you look at today's world, yeah. even the art that you design for a computer, it is simply bytes, zero and yeah. one, simply yeah. that. Yeah, the, yeah. The rest of the music in the world is in is in is, is in bytes, zeros yeah. and ones. The right yeah. combination gives it the right tone. Yeah. 
So that's exactly what I believed in those days. And, and, and I'm glad that I believed so. That yeah, yeah. Me, nothing is immeasurable. Yeah. If it is HR, people say perceptions cannot be measured. This cannot be measured. This is, this is, this, I mean, you do not have an outcome for it. I'm sorry. It has to be measurable. Mm. If it's perception, measure it at all. Yeah. If it is, if it is something that you believe cannot be measured, they, they, then find out an in-process measure. Mm. Find out the input measures, find out the mm. output belief measures, but mm. they're measures. Correct. So this is something which I think that the, that the world is, or at least the country is acknowledging today that HR, by, in order to be an effective or an efficient strategic business partner, Correct. it needs to be more measurable. So, and it needs to talk more of, you know, business lines Correct. and numbers today. Correct, correct. I, I think you have a, I have a great point. And I think what people often mean by the art part, and I'm, I'm saying the same thing, but uh, I think when it comes to being an HR professional, especially an HR head, you're always dealing with people's problems in in some way, right? Um, so very often you need to wear a hat of empathy. Um, you know, you have to be a you know counselor of sorts, sometimes therapist to your people as the HR head. So there is that part which is part science, part art in some way that uh, the the hat that you need to wear, right? Because it can't always be just the quantitative side of it, but that's what I think, right? I think yes, yes. that somebody who comes from that particular engineering background often has that hat, which is the quantitative numbers, analysis, backward engineering hat. And if he can uh, develop the people skill, right? Or the interpersonal skills that are required for that HR role, I think a combination of these two things often ends up being a deadly combination, right? So like I was telling, I want people to take something back from this show. So even if there are, you know, young professionals or or people who are from an engineering background don't think that your door is close to roles like HR, right? Because you can bring so much to the table to roles like HR, even given your background. So don't have those mental blocks. And exactly like Akshay has managed to have a phenomenal career, I'm sure anybody listening can make those moves. And often, Akshay, correct me if I'm wrong, right? I, I was speaking to, uh, I don't remember who, but he wasn't from an engineering background, but he was from a sales background, right? And his move was from sales to HR. And I said, you know, great. That has so much of an advantage too, because as a salesperson, you've been so close to the customer in some way or so close to where the rubber meets the road. You know, the real challenges of what happens um, when our product or service meets the customer, right? And there's so much of wisdom that you can take from that and bring into an HR role, um, you know, when you get into it. So whether you're engineering, whether you're sales, whether you're any other role, you can make that transition. Just pick out the best of what you learned on the business, on the engineering side, on the finance side, and be able to pick it up here. So uh, what's your comment on that? Yeah, definitely. In fact, again, getting back to the theories. Yeah. So the entire uh, marketing, if I'm to say, or, yeah. piece of, or the sales stands on the five P's of marketing, three C's yeah. of marketing, or the... Yeah. Uh, of the, the Philips Butler model, last yeah. whatever, right? So yeah. the fact remains the, the the five P's, the three C's, or the or the or the uh, you know the different models yeah. over here talks about the external customer. Just Correct. replace the word from external to internal. That's Correct. that is exactly what your entire HR, HR theories or HR phenomena go go, yeah. go standard on that. Yeah. So if I am to become a successful HR professional, I better be a good marketing guy. I better yeah. be a good engineering. I better be a good sales. I mean, sales, uh, sales person. Yeah, it's important. Otherwise, an HR cannot just state that I am supposed to come here as a fund manager, clap for me, walk out. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. You know, and often, I know I, uh, you know, I tread carefully when I when I when I say this. I think anybody that's studied HR through and through and whose first job is HR, sure, that brings in some advantages in itself, right? When you're a, uh, you know, when you probably studied HR and getting into it. But even for those people, what my suggestion often is, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, my suggestion is any opportunity that you get to be close to business, please jump into those opportunities and seize them as an HR professional. Because if, you, if you're not realistically aligned to business in some way, today you don't have a role to play as a HR uh, person. No, so true. Now, again, in all the fields of HR, an l and professional cannot be successful without understanding how the business flows. Yeah. Be it your, your product lines or be it even your soft skills, how would you even know whether 
the i mean where is the real need unless you understand the real pain areas of the person of the role of the, of the, of the given challenges over there yeah. similar if it's into business partnering what is he going to go and counsel the guy without even understanding the workflow of the business Business, yeah. Without even understanding that what is the role of role, role and responsibility of the individual, of the manager, yeah. of the people around him, yeah. so they they ought to be a part of business. Yeah, I mean, if if my HR guy comes back to me stating that this is the problem statement, this guys come come uh, you know whining to me, help me out with the resolution, I would say, yeah. first tell me what is the workflow around it. Yeah, what what are the business challenges? Is yeah. is this, is this whining as an outcome yeah. of the challenges or or is it more, more Interpersonal relation issues. Yeah, yeah. Then address the problem over there. Yeah, I, I think that's so so true, right? So let let me kind of segue into my next question, which is very connected to what we said, and take a moment to think through and answer this question, right? Because it's quite a quite a complex question, if you ask me, right? Complex and also layered, right? So, Akshay, what are the biggest changes that you have seen in HR as a function happen over the last five? to seven years, right? So you, you can keep a mark somewhere in the head and say, you know, what are those big two or three changes that you're seeing in HR as a function over the last five to seven years? Uh, good question, actually. See, uh, strategic business HR, if I'm to say, was more theoretical earlier, mm. right? So it was more like, the HR guy is a part of the town hall. If I, if it, mm. let, 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 let's take this as a part of town hall. So the, the, the HR guy is a part of the town hall organizing meetings, getting yeah. ensuring that the footfall is good enough and get things done. Mm. More into organizing. And then also looking at it that, that your people participation is high, your engagement levels are high. So pretty, pretty good measures. Mm. Now comes a day where your HR today or your HR business partner today is involved into deciding the KPIs of not only the, the exos, but also to the last mile, mm. which means that I am into decision-making for the organization. I, I mean, when I'm saying I, it's not me, I, I actually mean the entire fraternity of HR mm. is into the larger interaction of what are the organization plans or the, or the strategic plan for the organization for the next three years, five years, seven years on the line. Mm. From there, carving out the business plan, first of all, being a part of the same contribution of HR, contribution of, of the of the of the people factor, mm. especially in the industry that I am in, which is which is which is which is extremely people-centric driven, mm. wherein almost 60% of my operating expenses are, are on humans. Mm. And similarly is the is the IT and other other service industry. Yeah. So so the transformation has moved from being an implementer mm. to being a strategic business partner. Got and it. and a more realistic, you know, yeah. more realistic and, and a more uh, visible strategic business partner. Mm -hmm. So that's one major thing that I see. Mm -hmm. The second thing that I see is from, from the LND perspective, mm -hmm. again, from the same old days of measuring LND in terms of, or other learning in terms of your man days, yeah. participation percentages, and you know, number of hours covered and blah, blah. To a state, mm -hmm. if you're talking about uh, percentage of people people who have upskilled mm. now looking at the larger organization perspective of mm. upskilling index reskilling index mm. new skill uh, new age skills be, be, being brought in mm. so i don't think industries today at least the you know the, uh, the the companies which are forward looking today would measure training in terms of mandates mm. They actually measure in terms of your upskilling indexes or your reskilling indexes or whatever you may be. So, so, the, so the measures have changed, which thereby are a very strong indication of mm. the HR not being looked at just an implementer. Got it. How are you contributing to the present and the future of the organization? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's very, very, two very interesting points that you made. I have noticed that too, right? I, I've been a part broadly of this industry now for some 13, 13, 14 years. And I think over the last five years, in, increasingly I'm seeing HR become more strategic in nature. And I think the reason why that is, is the more that we move towards the, the knowledge economy, 
uh, in some way people are everything right your in a way your assets are are walking into your office in the in the morning and walking out of the office at, at in the evening right those are your biggest assets they're not the machines that you have but the the people and in lieu of that particular big change that's happening across the world in economies moving more towards knowledge i think people therefore become more critical right and then it's you know the getting the right people in which is recruitment becomes more important skilling people in the right way yeah. uh, through lnd becomes important and creating the right culture along with your managers and leaders along with the overall engagement right so each one of these things in hr i think has a direct correlation with the productivity and i think a lot of ceos founders have really realized that and that's why now uh, you know hr i think gets a seat on the table front and center right uh, I, I don't think akshay there's a there's a question about hr seat on the high table or the corner office anymore it's more about it's probably the most prominent seat today uh, which is there so i i'm happy that that change has happened so true in fact yeah. just to add to this point yeah now imagine a pyramid structure right so the, in the olden days it was generally assumed that or, or the way that that that, that, that they were told this, the eyes of the organization is the leadership team or it's it is it is the it is the strategy team or xyz with the eyes of the organization and the rest of the organization let's assume that they find people they are the hands and legs of the organization yeah. great worker yeah. right yeah today things have changed mm. for, 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 I mean, for an organization to be successful it needs to believe that every every hand comes with a definitely comes with a pair of you know eyes comes with a comes with a set of brain right mm. so acknowledge the same and the only function which can i don't say the only function but but the function which can help to ensure that these set of eyes align with the desired movement of the hands and also contribute to the larger purpose yeah. is the hr yeah. so i don't say that the hr will ensure that everything happens yeah. right but but definitely the hr plays a key role in ensuring that the managers or the leadership team yeah. believes in the in the strength of having you no know, let's say 250 cup uh, pairs of eyes 250 set of yeah. brains yeah. working together yeah. and then let them operate in, you know as one yeah. single entity but that's that's a, that's a very strong shift that uh, th that the industry by and large is acknowledging so the next question that i have is not about your company in specific but i want you to think broadly from more an hr head and and the fraternity point of view what keeps an hr head up at night uh, today right what are the two or three things that you are most concerned about when you sleep uh, you have a smile on your face so i'm assuming you're a good sleeper but the few nights <laughs> where where something keeps you up uh, as an hr head agnostic to your existing sector company what are those things see the most common thing is of course the 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 uh, the most common pain that everybody goes through is retention of talent mm. so everybody is talking about that how do i retain my talent Mm. So the first, I mean, the, the first point of it is how do you even identify your talent? Mm. That's the most abused word, right? So there's, mm. I still remember around seven, eight years back, mm. my, my the then CEO asked me, I mean, in fact, I asked him, what is the biggest challenge that you have? Mm. It, uh, it was, you know, my biggest challenge is the person till, till yesterday was an idiot and the day he resigns becomes a, becomes a talent for me. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my leadership comes out to me that yeah. my talent has resigned and then i asked uh, oh, just the last week you said this was an idiot yeah so do you have a way to measure that and of course then there are definite tools that we brought in the system and that's again my organization but otherwise yeah. i think the biggest challenge that an organization has by large is the ability to identify talent mm. and once that is through then comes how do I retain them? Because every human is a set of, you know, it's like everybody is unique. So as HR, there's, there is no, uh, forget HR, as a management, there is no one-stop one solution for all. Yeah. So what what the best that an organization could probably do is to, uh, you know, create a platter. Yeah. And the platter has to be probably as diverse as possible. Yeah. Right. And then make it, uh, get, let, you know, let them pick and choose. Now that's something which keeps me up because every day I I have a I probably I wouldn't say every day maybe every every frequent time uh, frequent frequency uh, intervals I 
I keep adding to it that what what new should I add to the platter because there's a new community coming in. Mm. Now there was a saying that there's a Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z. Mm. Now I remember 20 years, maybe 10 years back, 15 years back, a Gen X was supposed to be young. Mm. Now Gen X is not young. Gen Z is young. Mm. Was now maybe five years back, Gen Z was young. Today, mm. today there's some other Gen which is young. Mm. So even the Gen X, Y, Z is gone. Mm. So, so it is. It is. It is changing. The world is changing. The the the, the, the dynamics are changing. Mm. Expectations are changing. It is good to believe that my benefits have to be or good to state right. Benefits have to be have to be as flexible as possible. Mm. Now you might you you at your age might prefer uh, my GMC for example to cover children. Mm. A youngster would say, "Why am I wasting money for that?" Mm. Right. We might say that marriage is important. Youngsters would say, "Why do I need marriage? Children chahi. That's important, mm. right? Why? I mean, children might be important for me. Having a child is important. So why do I need to be certified, turned as married, of okay. you know, bearing a lot of conditions, right? So the latter changes, and and it doesn't sit around the benefits of it. It sits around all the fields. Correct. You might probably have a have a have a thirty seconds attention span to learn. I might have a have a ninety seconds. Somebody has, a, I mean, would start kicking off after ninety Correct. seconds. Correct. So that's something which keeps. I mean, that's something which is definitely troubling. Correct. Retention is the outcome. Right. So that's something which is like, how do I value add to my to my larger audience at every every stage? One new thing, if not every day, but but every uh, maybe maybe once a week. But again, it should not be something which is far beyond what their expectations because it's a human tendency that. What is given beyond expected that becomes their rights tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so some some tricky. You're maneuvering some tricky topics. So I just like to comment on them, right? So I think both identifying talent and retaining talent. Every HR head that I speak to echoes a similar sentiment uh, to you on that, right? And I think yes, it is a challenge, especially in, uh, you know where an economy is growing at six point five percent, and where everybody is so bullish right now. Um, in in our country, I think uh, retaining talent is a is a is a big uh, challenge for sure. Yeah, on this topic of of, I've lost track of what Gen Z, Gen X, Gen Z point one, right beyond the point. You don't count them, you know. It's mm. it's so easy. Yeah, you know, I I don't. I've lost track of what any of these terms mean right uh, because i don't think it is it is possible for any organization given the whole diversity within that organization sort of gen z or okay. a, right because there's just so much of diversity practically within any large organization yeah. right however i also think and akshay add to that i think there are some universal principles that need to be followed you know, and those universal principles, if followed quite well, leads to better retention happening, right? Mm -hmm. So just to give you an example of what a universal, uh, uh, you know, principle could be, it could be respect to all, right? Mm -hmm. Now, of course, it has so many what that actually means, we can do a deep dive into that, right? But whether you're a Gen Z, Gen X, Gen Z.1, or whatever it is, right? In the end, what you want is respect. Now, how that respect comes out, you may require some training and all those things for that. But I think each and every organization needs to focus on those things that never change, right? Um, I remember Jeff Bezos, I may, don't get the exact words where he said, you know, concentrate on the things that don't change, not the things that change all the time, right? Because how things will change all the time, you don't know, right? Mm -hmm. But the things that you know for sure, and in his context, what he said was, he said, irrespective of what technology change, my customer will always want low prices. Customer will always want a broad variety that he can choose for, so on and so forth, right? He said, those three or four things are not going to change. So I want to build my company around the three or four things that are not going to change. You know, a lot of HR professionals uh, mistake activity mm -hmm. for progress, right? Often so many of time following the trendy things, not realizing that by the time you trend, the next trend is there already, right? So you're not really getting to the base of something and sorting it yeah. out in some way. That See, what you think is exactly right. Yeah. Now, again, somewhere I think the world had identified something like that and then they, 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 they start saying there's something called fad. Mm. Very well used, but, but never understood. Right? <laughs> so you... <Yeah. laughs> So this yeah. is bad, great. I acknowledge it, but I still need it, right? I I, yeah. I still need it because others are doing. Yeah. So 
Uh, again, maybe what's, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that it's a Rohan, but I'd definitely yeah. recommend people to, for example, yeah. you said one value system, if at all, it yeah. is, it's around respect, other, respect others. Yeah. My yeah. suggestion to youngsters is to learn to be lazy. Mm. <laughs> now, that's something yeah. which might sound yeah. wild. But this actually came in from one of my, uh, you know, ex-colleagues. He, he actually left the organization. He was sure that he lost in at 9 30 mm. and he used to uh, no, log out he used to log out at, at 6 uh, at 5 30 because at, at 6 i think it was it was, it was a log out time but from 5 30 he used to pack out mm. however he was the most effective and the most efficient i'm using both the words effective mm. efficient mm. person in the organization because he said that in order to be lazy mm. i need i always ensure that what i what takes me eight hours today should and and, and uh, if if I'm doing it every day, after a month it shouldn't take me more than eight minutes. Yeah, yeah, right. And hence I'm lazy. Yeah. So I, I build something up. So the next time I'm I'm just lying there idling. Yeah. Let the world believe that I'm doing it in eight yeah. hours. Yeah. I'm doing it in eight, in eight eight minutes. The rest of my seven hours and fifty two uh, fifty whatever fifty two yeah. minutes. I'm 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 lazy. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Then give me no work. Yeah. I'll again create shortcut for that. In terms of, you know, your ability to do the. Uh, same thing in more effectively, more productively in, yeah. in lesser time. So, Akshay, in terms of over your years of experience, again, not this company in specific, what are the things that, if you had to point out towards two or three things beyond what you mentioned, that in a concrete way leads to better retention of talent? What would those two or three things be? Oh, uh... The culture in the organization, for sure. Yeah. So, what is the culture that 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 is created? Mm. Now, what contributes to the culture? Now, broadly, if I'm to say that there are five, four to five things that contribute to the culture. Mm. Uh, how are my peers and mm. peers treat me? How do the peers interact amongst each other? Number one. Mm. Number two, how my hierarchy? That is, how how are my managers in the organization? Mm. Good, bad, mm. three. Uh, how is the organization by large in its in its in its mm. processes system? And mm -hmm. things like that. Broadly, these three things contribute to the culture of the organization. Now, if I might get the mm -hmm. best of the resources in the world, if I don't set the culture right, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to have them stick for a longer period of time. Got it. And that's still far, far off. I don't even, have, I mean, I'm not even having people here because of the lack of culture. Mm -hmm. So the second thing that I look at is once somebody's into the system, Right now, now I'm a great fan of uh, Gallup, mm. the uh, Gallup Q12, as it be called. So, yeah. So yeah. Q12 talks about uh, you know twelve phases of engagement. So the, so the very first one mm. says that you need to have you need to first know what you are what you're doing. Second, mm. it says that you have your resources right. The second the third is mm. uh, that there's somebody at work who's listening to you. The fourth is somebody who's recognizing you and blah blah. Mm. So and definitely the, the uh, and maybe the third one is your the value proposition that that you create in the market. You might not be the best in the industry, the, the number one performer, because there has they, they can only be as, as number one. They, they can only uh, no one company which can be as number one. But what differentiates you is the value proposition that you create. Yeah. So these are three things, I think the culture, the value proposition, and the engagement patterns or, or the engagement uh, factors that you have within the organization. These are the three things which decides whether a talent stays back yeah. or decides to walk away from you. Yeah, yeah, I think that's so such an interesting and such a well articulated thought, Akshay. You know, one of I, I'll I'll just you know as an entrepreneur since I've been in that role through most of my life, actually building companies, and we had a policy from the very beginning that served us quite well, right? Um, is to say hire nice people, right? Um, uh, uh, and then we, you know, we moved that, we brought that down a little, Akshay, from hire nice people to hire decent people, right? We brought that down a notch a little because uh, that sometimes the bar for nice is 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 quite high. So we said hire decent human being, right? And uh, that had, if you ask me, the biggest impact on the culture that we created within the organization through good and bad time, right? Us just focusing on hiring a decent human being, right? And we would have different questions that we would ask during the interview process to really figure out whether this is a decent human being or not, right? Um, and the logic behind that was that if you're a decent human being, you're very likely to be a, a good leader, right? If you're a decent human being, 
being, you're likely to be a good subordinate or a good team member, right? If you're a good human being, you're likely to work better in teams, right? And collaborate better. Teams, right. If you're a good human being, you're likely a decent human who care more for your customer, right? Which is important. I could go on and on and on and on, right? Played quite a big part, if you ask me, in uh, determining a culture. And so many of our leaders that are there today are from that vintage. Yeah. And because they're from that vintage, they also lead their teams in a in a far more kind of empathetic, a better way, which leads to the retention. And also leads to results. And sure, I'm, I'm, uh, let me also clarify that there are loads of things that we don't get right. And this also has a flip side of, um, you know, more often than not, when you hire decent human beings, they're often, you know, possibly sometimes missing in the aggression that is required or, you know, taking a little more firm stand with people where required, right? So that's often the flip side on which we need to train uh, these people. But overall, if you ask me that combination and that thought process has worked very well for us in terms of the in terms of the culture and a lot of the other things that you spoke about, I think are very, very important. Something as simple as clarifying a person's role, um, I think is so important um, besides the other measures. So fantastic, fantastic answer. Thank you, Akshay, for that, right? You, you were at, trying to add something, did I? Yeah, I, just yeah, to add to your yeah. one point, we, we, yeah. we, we spoke about hiring decent people. Yeah. See, so again, theories talk about it, but uh, practically, just to again, I, I mean, second to what you know, to, to what the theories say that it's important to have your right, your your managers to be to be well in control. Yeah. Now, as an organization, I drive a culture A, a B C. Yeah. yeah. Now it's it's like a it's something like a Chinese whisper. Mm. What I intend to drive to what it finally reaches to the ground, mm. it's the role of your first, your senior manager, your mid-level manager, your first-time manager, and then and then the, the the end user, whoever gets it over there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's important to build these managers in the organization. Yeah. To, to, now that's where the role of LD very strongly plays. That's where the role of the HR business partner strongly comes into picture. Yeah. yeah. To build these managers to become extremely porous. Yeah. Right. They need. They need not be. They. They. They should not be opaque. They need to be transparent in in yeah. terms of the behaviors. Right. Yeah. They need to be porous in terms of the behaviors. They need to. Yeah. They need to let things flow with the with the right effective means. Yeah. The next level. The culture then gets educated the way that that is expected from the top to the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. So the biggest problem with managers today is that they try to build clones. Yeah. Because you also spoke about this, right? You spoke about. People come with, with different skills and their, their trainable skills. Yeah. The big problem with managers is that when today somebody comes in as a manager, he, yeah. he, he has to build clones within the system. I, yeah. I've been super performer till, till last year. Yeah. I've been promoted to becoming a manager. Now I want people like me because this is what brought me success. Yeah. So yeah. you're not hiring for a team. You're actually hiring yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so so tricky that is though. No, actually it's so tricky because... You, I often, you know, debate with that part uh, kind, kind of myself when I when I think about it, because there are definitely some behaviors, right, uh, and skills, both behaviors and skills that lead to people performing better at their job, right? Um, and, you know, how much are you looking for those behaviors and skills, uh, looking at that. training, uh, yeah, or yeah. are you looking at just clones, right? And I think what, what most people should look at is identify what are the behaviors and the skills that are important to succeed in that role and try to identify those and even train people on developing those behaviors or or, or, or skills, right? Uh, but But often what happens is that can be mistaken to creating your own clones in some way. <laughs> That's right? true. Yeah. See, actually, uh, now again, from the theory, theory it says that KSA, the, the, the most yeah. important thing is knowledge, then comes skill, and then comes the attitude. Yeah. I say it's just the vice versa. It yeah. is KSK, ask. Yeah, yeah. The most important thing is the attitude, your knowledge and skills could follow up, that can be trained, non-trained, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Your attitude to be a part of the team, your attitude to be a part of the organization for the larger purpose alignment, I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's very interesting. So, you know, the, the two quotes have really stood in my mind for a very, very long time, right? One is by Jim uh, Collins, right? In one of Build to Last, or one of these books where he said, he said the most important job of a leader of the company is get the right people on the bus, get the wrong people off the bus and get the right people in the right places on the bus, that's right? Yeah, so I, I that has always stuck with me because I think 
and that's the prominence of hr again right coming in why is hr got a seat on the on the the corner office table today is because that has become so critical for every organization in the knowledge economy uh, as a matter of fact you would go back to thinking that even in sectors like manufacturing um, uh, it's become knowledge based right the uh, it's become so knowledge based uh, that even those sectors have changed quite dramatically but anyway right so so that becomes a very critical part for companies of all kinds in the modern age you know the other quote was from a ex hr head of google where he said if you had to spend 1 dollar on hr spend 80 cents on getting the right talent in right uh, which i think is very very important although we're a learning and development company but i always tell people if you want to get something right first get the right people in the door uh, because uh, you know you can't turn a donkey into a horse and you can't turn a horse into an elephant right mm -hmm. um, you can make a donkey a better donkey you can make a horse a better horse you can make an elephant a better elephant right but you can't get one person and however much you dress a donkey up he's not going to look like an elephant or a horse right and vice versa right so uh, I, I think getting the right people in the more we focus on that the the better it is and you would agree I'm sure you'd agree that we do not take enough efforts I, I am uh, guilty of that myself as somebody that runs an organization I think we don't take enough efforts to really upskill our people to interview better right uh, you know to set those things right but if we really set our interviewing and selection processes make them a lot more robust i think that will really help well, that's true see now again this is this is a knowledge intensive industry yeah. uh, especially if you are into 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 uh, you know uh, financial services there is a huge churn that happens the 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 race is more to fill the bucket in than to let the inverted funnel flow out yeah, man. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the, the challenge stays over there of quantity versus quality. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So if you focus too much on quality, your quantity would never fill in. Yeah. So, so what happens is you ensure that the quantity is high, mm -hmm. at least at a, you know the the, uh, the 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 possibility or your 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 probability factors would come in over there, and at least yeah. some percentage of them being being good enough would you know, operate out there. So that's yeah. where the balance between attrition versus talent retention and things like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So Very now again, proud, proud to state about this, this organization where I am in. So yeah. we have invested specifically around uh, having very sharp uh, hiring processes in, uh, in uh, built in, uh, in process measure, uh, you know, performance and, and, and quality, quality effectiveness. Mm. We stand somewhere on 10, at least 10 percentage below the market median in the industry. Very it doesn't interesting. Matter. Maybe. So that's something that that we have ensured. I mean, we we have built. I mean, we, we weren't like that mm. till the year two thousand nineteen. We were somewhere at least around three to four percent above the market median. Mm. For the years, we have built it so that we have we are constantly being dipping down further in the attrition. Mm. So I wouldn't acknowledge it at only to the quality of hire, but I would also say it's the quality of hire, quality of uh, or, or the efforts put around development building the building the right managerial capabilities i think it's, it's a holistic thing again supported by the business because or being able to sell it to the business that, that these things impact both the productivity as well as from the hr metrics if i'm to say your retention yeah. and uh, outcome yeah, I, I just thought of this. We we won't go that ra down that rabbit hole, but you just use the term. You know, I, you know, we had to sell this to business. You were speaking about how, uh, you know, even a sales guy can make a transition so easily into HR, so to speak, and use so many of his skills because. I think so much of being a HR head and in the HR team is actually your ability to persuade, convince, influence both internal and external stakeholder, right? It almost seems like a sales job more often than not, just your internal stakeholders. It is, it is a sales job because yeah. what, you, what you're selling is your words here. <laughs> you <don't laughs> <anything to> your... <laughs> yeah, because you know, you're, you're, you're selling for people to join your company, then you're selling for them to stay back. I, like <laughs> then you're stay, selling. I'll tell you one thing. Yeah. There is this this statement, right? That uh, the most cunning cunning uh, fox in the in the corporate space is the marketing guy who ensures that he can sell anything to the or, or the sales guy who ensures yeah. that he can sell anything or yeah. anything to the customer. Yeah. I tell the boss, yeah. I your if I'm to say Bob. Yeah. <laughs> because I ensured that you you are hired within with organization and you're stuck up with me for so long. <laughs> 
Yeah, so, so, so the, the the ability to persuade, the ability to influence is is such a universal kind of requirement. It brings me to my next question, right? I, we're like running out of time. It's been such an engaging conversation with you. But um, Akshay, what if somebody's starting off, young professional, just out of college, zero to three years of experience, and if he were to ask you, saying, what are the three skills that I need that are going to help me through my career, right? Um, or behaviors, let's let's kind of widen the bucket slightly, right? So what are the three skills or behaviors that I really need to equip myself with to have a successful career? So what would your answer to that young professional be? One is definitely the first thing that I, that I mentioned, you to be lazy. Okay. So always arm yourself or ensure that you are lazy. And it, it literally means that in order to be lazy while being uh, you know, the best in class is try to find solution or you need to find a solution to something which is repetitive in nature for you God. and which is time consuming. So that's that's one thing. And there is nothing in this world that doesn't have a shortcut. Got it. Or very, you, very or interesting. Yeah, I, I want to add something to what you said, right? And and then uh, another like quote that really stuck with me through my life is to say, there's nothing more useless than doing something well that shouldn't be done at all, right? <laughs> uh, and it's exactly what you're saying, right? There's nothing more useless yeah. than doing something well that shouldn't, have, shouldn't be done at all, right? So I think it's very important for everyone. You're probably using the word lazy. What, what you mean is don't indulge in activities that don't need to be done or exactly. find better ways of doing them because that's going to lead to your productivity. Uh, and you're, you're saying lazy as a shorthand uh, to, 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 to do that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I use it more as a common man term yeah. So that, that stays in your mind, right? Correct. Yeah. And the second thing is uh, again, this, this this goes across different levels in hierarchy, but it, it definitely has to be with the freshers, is what brought you here will not take you there. Mm. Right. So this there's actually a book on this, but this is this is a very strong quote. Just just to remember this quote that yeah. if you were a topper in the college, or if even if you were the a mediocre guy, or if, even if you were a failure in the college. Is what is what you achieved till now. Now, now comes the next phase of your career. You you need to be delta from what you were yesterday, and that yeah. delta has to be added continuously. So yeah. today, if I'm a CPO, then it's definitely not because what I was five years back. So no, and and similarly, if I mean what I am today will not sustain for tomorrow. I need to add on more skills to be to be moving upwards further. Amazing. So I think it's very important to 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 remember, to remember the statement of what brought you here will not take you there. Yeah, I, I think that's such an interesting comment, right? Very often, you know, in my interactions with people that have, you know, the campus to corporate, when they call me to address those people, I'd always tell them is what you played in your campus is football. Uh, now what you're playing is cricket, right? <laughs> so it's I a game, it. but it's a different game, right? That you're you're playing right now. So if you insist that, no, no, I want to football, khelna hai, but here is cricket, chal rahi hai, right? So you need to be able to, like you said, right? To take things, yeah. what got you here is not going to get you there. And therefore, sometimes even the most successful person at football may not end up being the most successful person at cricket unless he does a quick adaptation and realizing that different games are being played in campus yeah. versus, uh, versus on the corporate side. So I, I think that's a very good point. And I take your point one step further just to add to it is to say that you know, at different levels of your career, what got you here is not going to get you to the next yes. level, right? Yes. You probably join in more often than not as an IC, an individual contributor. But, you know, then the next skill possibly you need to develop is that of leading a team, right? Now, totally different or new, not totally different, but huge upskilling needs to be done totally. for you to do that, yeah. that level. Great. I think that's a great point. Anything else that you'd like to share as advice to young professionals? Yeah, yeah. One important thing, because most of the guys today, I, I mean, the, the young guys, huh, they are yeah. very important aspect. They, they are extremely uh, short-sighted, as I see so. so. They need instant gratification. Yeah. Uh, they need instant and, and gratification today, as I again look at it, majorly it could be in the form of money, mm. right? Uh, for them, annual appraisals don't stand in place. Mm. For them, probably quarterly appraisals don't stand as well. It should probably be a daily appraisal for them. You mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. increase at least by a penny. Yeah. So I think uh, theories, theories, again, you know, theories of motivation. 
So Herzberg theory talks about that that uh, money is not a motivator. Money, in fact, is a negative motivator. So if given, if you know, if not given, it demotivates you. But but if yeah. given, it will not remain in you because it is it it it, it follows a law of uh, you know diminishing marginality. That is LDMU. Yeah. yeah. So whatever, let's say even if you're offered a crore today when you when you join an organization, within within six months you start feeling that you are being underpaid. Yeah. That's the fact of money. Yeah. So don't ever work for money work for the kick yeah work for that that thing that 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 would drive you every day morning to you know rush to the office rush to the to the to the i mean i forget the office to the to the to the to the, to the work environment around you yeah that's something that should drive you yeah i, I so think that's that's, that's that yeah i, I think that's an excellent point again actually just to um yeah, sure. I think you articulated that very well in terms of the role money plays, right? If you're not getting what you think you should get paid, of course, that's a demotivator. But, you know, you get used to whatever you're getting paid very, very quickly, right? And that's why that stops being a motivation through the year, which not, not many people um, realize. I think for most young people, when you talk about kick, you mean, you know, they should get excited about the work that they're Thank doing. You. Yes. Right. Yes. And I think typically that excitement comes from when you're doing challenging work or when you're doing work, which you're really learning a lot from. Right. So I think for any kind of young professional, you know, look for places where you're learning the most, because that is going to hold you in good stead, because more often than not, and Akshay, you'd agree, right? Like we said, your life in campus, even if you are a good student, is a different game than the game that you're playing at uh, in in companies right so you may have learned certain things there but you know when you come and you at the workplace the skills uh, behaviors everything is quite different that you need to adapt to so your initial first i don't know five to eight years needs to be which are the places where you're going to learn the most uh, and definitely don't go for places that are that are extremely bad paymasters, right? I don't think either of yeah, us are suggesting that, right? Yes. But uh, you know, keep learning as your priority more than more than anything else. In fact, just to add to your point, yeah, yeah. Uh, in fact, this is this is sort of little conflict thing to that. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, I believe in one thing that yeah. in order to learn, you need to pay. Right. Yeah. So I think you have you 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 have paid throughout your I mean your parents have paid for you throughout your school, your college life, and then you have learned. Mm -hmm. Now, why should somebody I mean let me be that bad manager? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why should I pay you and also teach you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the answer to that is uh, nobody would, would handhold you or or penalize you for, for not learning. They would yeah. tell you, they would give you work to be done. Yeah. Now as a efficient individual or as a, as a you know aspirational individual you need to look into it of how do i or or question why am i doing this the questions have to go first to yourself look back into the books and and see that does it correlate to some of my learnings yeah. because that's something if you are able to correlate your your experiences with your learning that would remain for your lifetime if you're only yeah. doing it because being asked to do so you would yeah. never ever remember it and then you would say this the same response after after a couple of years i have i've, I've learned nothing yeah because yeah right so that so that's that's a very important aspect that don't wait for somebody to come and teach you that this is what i'm learning this is what i'm teaching you this is what is from X, Y, Z concept. This is what is to be done. Sorry. They would come and give you tasks. You need to go back and, and try to hunt out that what it, I mean, how does it correlate it back from my learning journey? And if you're able to find that, that's the place where you need to be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, uh, I think, you know, I, I, I'm asked the question very often as to how you know, people develop themselves, right? How does self-development happen? And I, I say it's typically through four ways, right? The biggest one is on the job, right? Uh, learning that you spoke about. The second yeah. is is feedback that you will receive on the job, right? Because so, so find places where you'll have people giving you feedback all the time, right? You know, the, the, the third way is through structured knowledge gaining, right? So you could take up a course, read a book, so you, you know, tackle a subject in some structured ways, how you develop yourself. And the fourth is through introspection and observation, right? 
um, just and that's why working from office becomes so so essential to learning in some way right because so much of what you learn is just but through your observation of people around you of what they're doing how you're doing so there are subtle things without you knowing that you tend to pick up uh, depending on what your environment is which can not happen as well from work from home kind of roles right you're learning through observation Right. Yeah. And um, I think lastly, just introspection, right? Constantly asking yourself, hey, what could I have done better? Right. So a combination of these four things typically leads to learning and development that happens um, for a person. And each one of these things need to be done well, especially by people in an early phase in their career. Of course, it's applicable through and through, right? Throughout our our careers and lives in some way but at least people in the early phase really need to really need to focus on this thing so true, so true about it yeah akshay this was such a yeah, lovely conversation uh, sorry, yeah. no no go on go on go on go on <laughs> no, i was i was like, actually trying to refer back to your statement where you're saying that the, that the learning has to constantly happen yeah because now what happens is now, now, especially for the for the youngsters again, like uh, it might probably sound as a reiteration because I'm I'm very constantly facing this issue of youngsters uh, looking for a uh, for a for a support or, or a guide to come and tell me that, that you know that, that what should I do next. Mm. So what's important now? It's now okay. Now the way that I tell them is that you look. It's your responsibility to find a mirror for yourself. Mm. Right. Look into the mirror. Look all across to all angles, and then you need to comb your hair, mm. right? It's your responsibility to first hunt for the mirror. It's your response. The the best I can do is I can ensure that there is a mirror in the office. You need to walk into the mirror first. Mm. It's you who has to carry a comb with you. Mm. The best I can do is I can arrange for a comb to be kept over there. Mm. However, it is you who has to dis you no know, ensure that the comb is to you know is to, is to is to set the hair right as per your requirement. Mm. I cannot come and put the hair for you. Mm. The best I can do is I can still show you that part of your of your of your head, which is probably not visible to you. Yeah. That is the bald part, which can come to you through a coaching or yeah. maybe feedback session. Yeah. The rest is up to you to take it from there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I would actually I totally agree with you. I'd just go one step further and say that you know any like when the student is ready, the teacher teacher appears right that is an ancient quote there right so the yeah. minute people are ready to learn i think they find ways and means to learn right yes. um uh, so i would go one step further uh, everything that you said is right but you know find the mirror and find the person to hold it as well exactly and exactly. then go, you get what i'm trying to say right so if you're going to like nobody there's another nice quote that says nobody comes and gives you power you just need to go and get it right or exactly. you just need to go and take it so exactly like that you can't say Oh, you know, the organization or the HR head or somebody needs to come and teach me something. Listen, in today's world, if you realize that there is a certain skill gap, there are just about a hundred free and sometimes cost effective ways of doing and learning something. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so you can do that. And again, Akshay, what I think, uh, what I tell people, if, if the first point of learning is on the job, if that's the first point of learning, Will you learn by doing the same things again and again, or will you learn by actually putting yourself up for challenging work? Right. Exactly. When that, you put yourself up for challenging work, when you take challenges within an organization, don't think that, oh, I'm doing an organization a favor. No, you're doing yourself a favor by taking a challenging role because through that challenging role, you end up learning and your yeah. confidence ends up growing, right? As a result of that. But a lot of people think that why should I do that extra work? Why should I take up that challenging job? I'm not being paid for that. And I'm like, man, if you think like this, you know, there is no way for you to make progress because the a simple rule of thumb is to say that, you know, whatever you're getting paid for, do more than that. Then you'll start getting paid for that as well. Exactly. Right. But yes. first do more than what you're getting paid for. Right. That compels in most places, people to, uh, to come and pay you more. Right. So, um, I think Akshay, you and me have a lot to talk about. We uh, we were supposed to do an hour. We've already run run out of time, and it feels like I've just started my conversation with you. 
So at some point of time, let's do part two of this after I, I call a <laughs> few other guests. Uh, and if you're ever towards this part of town, let's do a catch up offline and discuss a lot of stuff that we couldn't probably discuss today. Sure, sure. Thank you um, very much. Any final always, words? Yeah, yeah, Akshay, any final words of, of wisdom to our audience? Uh, or not wisdom, whatever you'd like to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think it's, it's, it's a small life. And yeah. everybody around you needs to ensure that you enjoy your life to the fullest. I mean, to the fullest. There's, there is, there's, there's, there's nothing called. Uh, no, you can only reflect back into the mirror. You can never get back to the mirror and then enjoy your past. So, 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 so live every every day of your life with with full on energy and with with with, with, with the belief that this is my last day. Yeah, I think that's such a beautiful message to end on. Um, a person without a smiling face must not open shop. You have a amazing smile which which i'm sure helps a lot at home and helps a lot as your role as hr head right because yeah. the the you want to see your hr head being a, a, a kindred positive uh, spirit and i think you're bringing that to the yeah, table yeah, you, are. Brought, <laughs> you brought to this conversation so thank you very much and i hope to see you soon same here yeah so thank you